Hello guys, in this video we'll build HTTP3 server using Rust. First of all, let's try to understand what is HTTP3 and why do we even need it. But even before, let's try to remind ourselves what's the difference between HTTP1, 1.1, 2 and 3. First of all, let's talk about HTTP 1.0. One request per TCP connection. We have a client and server. Client makes a TCP connect request to the server. Once the connection is established, client sends a single request, gets a response, and the connection is disconnected. The issue here is straightforward on our face. It's super slow because no connection reuse, no persistent connections, and you know you have to constantly keep on reconnecting to serve the requests, so which makes it super slow. Now let's move to HTTP 1.1. Now HTTP 1.1 solves this problem by allowing persistent connections, but head of line blocking occurs because responses must be sent in an order so if one response is delayed it blocks all other responses but as per a block by cloudflare a lot of internet traffic till date is using http 1.1 as it's good enough for most of the use cases but with http 2 and http 3 a lot of traffic is moving to these new protocols as well so let's talk about http so http 2 solves this problem by allowing us multiplexing so what is multiplexing then Multiplexing is basically allowing multiple requests and response on a single TCP connection simultaneously. But HTTP2 still suffers from TCP level head of line blocking because if one packet is lost, all streams wait for retransmission, which is basically something that TCP ensures. So for that re reason, head of line blocking remains on the packet level in HTTP2. So now let's move to HTTP3, which we want to cover in this video and we are more interested to talk about. Remember all of these versions are incremental. So by definition all the features that are supported in prior versions from HTTP 1.0 to HTTP 3 are supported in each of these versions but new versions are just to solve the challenges or problems with the existing versions. So for example in HTTP 2 we had this problem of TCP head of line blocking but HTTP 3 solves this problem by running over quick UDP protocol allowing us true multiplexing and since there is no TCP so the TCP level head of line blocking problem is solved. So here is how a typical quick UDP internet connection or quick over UDP protocol looks like. Client initiates initial quick handshake, server response and the uh, quick uh, handshake is completed and then a true multiplexing with UDP is done over HTTP 3 where multiple requests can be sent using a same connection and then later you can just close the connection. So this is how typical uh, communication looks like. Now let's get our hands dirty and do a bit of hands-on on HTTP 3. But pause here and if you haven't understand anything feel free to drop in the comments and as we move to the code side there is a link to my discord in description so if there are any queries feel free to reach out to me on discord as well. Even before we move to the code, let's discuss what makes Quick Protocol secure, fast and reliable. Now, remember, we did discuss it operates over UDP and you must have, you know, learned somewhere in your school or while practicing that UDP is unreliable. Yes, it's fast. So this is how you can pause here and read all of these, how, uh, you know, Quick ensures security, speed and reliability. To go over some of these, all the traffic is encrypted by default because it uses TLS 1.3 for all the connections. So there is no unencrypted mode even. There is no way you can have even if you even want to, there is no way to have unencrypted traffic. And uh, the authentication between client and server is using certificates, which prevents man in the middle attack as well. And, uh, you know, there is no reply attack possible prevents reuse of any old packets. Duplication detection is there. Uh, there is packet loss and recovery. Uh, retransmitted lost lost packet with something which is not possible with the baseline UDP or UDP uh, and then uh, connection migration so seamless switch between networks this is something uh, because uh, for which uh, reason there's lots of you know these big companies giant companies are acquiring or using HTTP 3 because of connection migration seamless switch between networks Wi-Fi to mobile and stuff so yeah this is what makes it really secure fast and reliable now let's get to the first of all pretty basic and straightforward rust project structure we have main rs where we'll add our server client rs where we'll add our client to communicate with our server we'll serve both as a separate binaries so in our cargo trouble file we have a bin server 
that points to man or s and then bin client which points to client or s and these are dependencies that we'll be using today we'll discuss about each of these dependencies as we use so let's move to man or s and add our server side code first of all we need certificates as we discussed in the beginning we need certificates for communication and http3 so we'll use self-signed certificates i've already covered self-signed cert certificates in a separate video with rc gen dependency that we just add there should be a video popping on right top make sure to click it watch it but let's quickly add the certificate generation so pretty straightforward here we have our generate self-signed certificates where we are generating certificate and we have our private key and certificates so now we have our certificate and now we set up the cryptography provider to encrypt and decrypt the network traffic with tls now let's set up our tls server config and first of all we generate our self-signed certificate the method that we just add to generate the certificate and right here we are setting no client certificate auth which means skip client certificate authentication because you know most web clients don't use it instead you know we rely on application level authentication like jwt and stuff and then application level network protocol is h3 which is http3 which is basically telling the client that i only talk in http3 so once we have our config set up let's spin up our https server on port 4433 usually we use this port for uh, you know when we want to uh, not block for 43 the default https port but want to test something out locally and then right here we accept the connections so we are using h3 and h3 quinn something that helps us with uh, http3 or quick protocol and rust and tokyo for async programming which we have been using like literally uh, day and night and uh, right here we accept the connection and as you can see then we get the request so we keep on getting the request and all of the request i have uh, you know mapped to some of the path so either it's like all the routes that we have since quinn is very low level so you know like axiom or uh, actex web or you know uh, rocket there's no uh, way we can ha ha have our handlers separately or you know use kinds of attribute or something but here we have to rely on self-detection so here as you can see i'm matching so if it is slash we respond with hello from http3 if it's slash test we respond with hello from http3 test endpoint and then health endpoint and if it doesn't matches to something then we just uh, return unknown endpoint and then right here we are building our response with status header just like how we would do normally as well but on a low level because you know as i mentioned quinn doesn't support uh, like those high level and you know make things abstract for you so we uh, respond with respond with our stream and uh, once uh, there is like uh, right here as you can see connection accept okay and uh, if there is none then we just break and uh, in case of error as well so pretty straightforward that's all that you need to spin up http3 server and start accepting connection and you know some request as well so let's go ahead and try to run to see if our server is running before we write the client and do the actual communication so let's spin up our bin server and boom there you go we have http3 server listening on our url and now let's go ahead and add our client to test our application server and to end and let's add our client first of all on the client side uh, we can verify our server certificates or we can choose to locally skip the certificate verification as well uh, this is useful when you are building something for just testing out how http3 operates and you don't want to really get into the jargons of uh, verification on the client side as well for server certificate so we can just uh, simply skip the certificate validation or verification and now let's set up our client side to perform the communication first of all we need cryptography provider as on the server side as well to you know uh, do the encryption and decryption for network traffic on fly with tls and to set up our queen client uh, we are not performing any server very uh, certificate verification which is kind of useful for local or you know testing and on another video we will cover where you know we'll perform all the verification all the authentication that we need but right here we can skip on the client side at least to verify the server certificate 
and uh, with no client auth obviously as on the server side we configured and then the protocol as h3 or http3 and then we try to connect to our server and send some requests that we have slash slash test and slash health and a string our response and once we get the response we just go ahead and print it and right here we have a connection driver task it's a background task that manages you know the underlying quick http3 connections handling things like network io protocol state and keep alive so on the application we only focus on sending and receiving the request without worrying about low level connection details so this is something that i admire and i like about uh, quick so we can you know uh, we only care about the application sending request and response instead of you know managing the connections and stuff uh, as well and at the end uh, we are waiting for processing as well as the background stuff and then we wait for endpoint to get idle basically no ongoing request and stuff and then we exit so this is how the client side looks like pretty neat and clean on the client side as well as well as on the server side now let's go ahead and test our application now on the left hand side we run our server first so there you go we have our server up and serving now let's set up the client so let's run the client on the right side and there you go as you can see we end up getting three prints on the client and three on the server where it says got request for path slash protocol http 3.0 and then respond with 200 okay similarly for health and similarly for check and the protocol as well on the both sides that's it for this video guys i hope this was knowledgeable you guys you know refresh your concepts of http 1 to 2 and then uh, we discussed about 3 it was useful hopefully and the future videos will cover http 3 more securely as well where we'll do client side verifications as well i'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic until then bye, -bye.